Welcome. I'm Halcyon, and this is Hug Nation. Today I want to talk about Larry Harvey. Larry Harvey is the founder of Burning Man. That's a tough term, I think, to assign to him because it makes it sound like he created this thing that we see as Burning Man. He is more of the igniter. He is the one that lit the first match, burned the first effigy that became the movement. And all along the way has become a part of a group of passionate, brilliant people, well-valued and integrous people who worked to keep this idea on track. Keeping the idea on track, not the event. Because one of the things that I think is, is so amazing and that I admire so much about Larry Harvey and the Burning Man organization is that he didn't create an event and then sell tickets to it. He didn't create an entertainment process. He didn't create some like, uh, I, have, I wanna do something and then share it with people. He did something with friends and then it resonated with people and it grew. And as it grew and more people responded to it and, and resonated with it, it changed and it shaped in the shapes of the people that were drawn to it. And rather than smash the ideas as they came, the very foundation, the very concept, the very idea of this event was that it was what people made of it. People often ask Larry about the meaning of the man. What did he, why did he do it? What was the first one? What did it mean? And I love that he was resistant if ever explained anything. He liked the idea of it being a blank canvas. And I admire the, the, the personal strength and power that that took as people are giving attention, as people are putting accolades, as people are saying, you did this great thing, tell us more about it, why did you do it? And as they're presenting him the ability to dictate, he, he resisted and pushed it back and said, it's what you make of it. And I, I feel like I've learned so much not directly thinking, oh, Larry did this, or, but that, that idea of, of learning through being trusted to come to truth myself. That, and that's what I think the Burning Man ethos is so about, is, is putting together these principles written by Larry, which support an individual to come to their own truth, to provide what they want to provide. You know, a normal event, a promoter curates what they think the crowd wants and then entertains them. But in Burning Man, it's just an open framework that the crowd then is responsible for creating. And that takes a lot of faith in humanity, at least the potential of humanity. And I love that that's this Burning Man city, this family, when we are given the trust, people step up. People reach in and, and create and express in these dramatic ways. And, and that will continue without Larry Harvey. And I think that's one of the, such of the awesome things about the legacy that he left is that the fire is burning. One person, one group cannot stop it. It's internationally burning. I think about how influential Burning Man has been on my life. I was thinking the other day that, that not even Jesus has influenced my life as much as Larry Harvey and his legacy. And I know that I'm not alone. I know there's many, many people who for the first time found an organization, a group, a philosophy, a open-ended supportive community that, that profoundly tra changed them. And while I'm mourning the loss of the individual consciousness of Larry Harvey, I'm also celebrating the potential of a human life. I got chills. Like, what if all of us could aspire to being that kind of inspiration. Not taking a vision and, and, and motivating a bunch of people to realize it for you, but creating an openness and a space for people to 
become their superheroes, to become their artists, to become the them that is a part of the healing of the world. You know, I feel like in many ways, my life purpose is trying to be a little bit of that. You know, if I could be a little bit of that, then, or be a part of that movement. If all, you know, if, if enough of us can be a little bit of that, that ripples, changes the world. I know Larry Harvey's ripples have changed me, and I know that my ripples change people. And so the Larry tsunami, the earthquake of Larry Harvey, cannot be stopped. It is change the Teutonic plates of our culture, and, and it, the aftershocks will not stop. That's fucking awesome. Yes, I'm sad, but I'm also psyched that that, that is a role model. That is... That gives me a sense of hope and faith that we can live that way. You know, it's like I sometimes share the picture of my grandpa with Martin Luther King Jr. And it was so powerful to me because it showed me that great men and women were not mythical figures, but they were our peers. They were just like us. They just stepped up and walked the walk and lived in integrity according to their values. And I think Larry Harvey's another example of someone that that shows what you can do. Did he sell out? Could he have been incredibly wealthy? Yes. Could he have... There... I imagine that he slept really good knowing the way his ripples hit the world. And that is a wealth, that is an abundance, that is a rich, that is available, I think, to all of us. So, I, why do I feel um, qualified to give a tribute to Larry Harvey? Honestly, I am not. I am a 20-year Burning Man participant and enthusiast and fanatic and grateful for everything that Burning Man has done for my life. But I didn't know Larry. We met probably half a dozen times over the last 20 years. And most of those times... I was a bit of a nuisance, I think, to him, a little bit of a fanboy trying to share a couple words and get a picture, just like, you know, many people did. And I don't blame him. You know, he didn't sign up to be this, like, mascot taking pictures with the fans. He's just a dude living artistically and authentically, and by doing so, impacted all these people. There was a couple moments that I in crossing our paths that were especially awesome though. One was in, I think, maybe 2000, I had this uh, individual art performance that I went around and shared with people. I would ask people if they wanted a dirty hug or a clean hug. And if they said the dirty hug, I was wearing these big foam cuffs covered in pink fur that I called my hugulets. People say, what are those? I go, they're hugulets. They didn't exist, so I had to invent them. And then I would grab the person and bam, 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 and give him like this massaging hug. That was the clean hug. The dirty hug, I would also hit and turn on the vibrator that I had in my fur-covered jock strap. And then I would squeeze against someone with my crotch and, and bam, 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 bam. So I give it to somebody who was involved with First Camp. They brought me over and told me to give one to Larry Harvey. And I gave him one, and he kind of like, it was kind of grin, silly grin and said, that was something. And I remember how proud I felt that I had shared my art and lifted up Larry Harvey's experience in that moment. My favorite story about him was before that, I believe. And it was, it was I didn't even talk to Larry. I just was invited to be a part of a photo shoot by the amazing Julian Cash. And it was a photo shoot where Larry Harvey was uh, reading a book, Free to Be You and Me, which if you don't know that book and that soundtrack, it is, it is the children's book version of Burning Man. And then there was a bunch of burners sitting around his feet, like listening to Papa tell a story. And as we were waiting for the photographer to set up, Larry was kind of sitting away from us, and I felt too intimidated to say anything. I was just stoked to be a part of it. And a woman stormed into the camp and was like, is, Larry Har- is that Larry Harvey? 
are you Larry Harvey? And he's like, yeah. He goes, well, and she's holding the who, what, where guidebook. She goes, I walked all the way across from the two o'clock side all the way to nine o'clock in G where there was supposed to be a pancake breakfast and there was nobody even in their camp. And Larry says, you walked all the way across the playa. She goes, yeah. There wasn't anybody in the camp. She goes, no. She's like starting to feel like, yeah, righteous indignation, I, right. And she, he goes, you didn't see anything good along the way? And I remember just like, yes, that, that, that is, it's the core lesson. I don't know what the core, maybe surrender. Surrender, it's part of surrender. That, that idea that, that letting go of the way things are supposed to be, trusting intuition, trusting your own talents and your own intuition and the community and the magic and allowing the best thing possible to happen to you that you didn't even know is a possibility. And how many of life-changing experiences I've had in my life were because of something that happened along the way, something great that happened along the way, some person, some hidden gem, some nugget of brilliance that I stumbled upon and was not so attached to the destination that I wasn't able to enjoy it. A destination is just an excuse to get going, to move forward and then allow the magic. I love that story. I actually was very lucky to go at an event in Esalen a couple of years ago with a lot of Burning Man staff. And uh, while well, I was very intimidated because these are like, you know, the, the builders of the, the, of, of the palace and, and, and I am just a, a participant, you know, I, 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 I had some very intimidated and, and I, I won't, I'm not proud of um, the, the, time I spent in my room trying to psych myself up to go socialize with these people I had so much admiration for. But by the end of the weekend, um, I spent, I, I shared a, a meal, maybe it was a dessert, it was a short conversation, but I, I was, that was the time that I sat with him and um, he was aware of things that I had done and uh, things that I had shared and, and, um, and thanked me for, um, for my contributions to the community. Um, and it was, uh, it was almost as awesome as giving him a dirty vibrating hug. <sighs> you know, I feel like the whole, the whole point of Burning Man is that everything is transitory. You know, it's that burn it every year to remind ourselves that everything's transitory, to remind ourselves of the preciousness and the sacredness of each moment. And Larry was a perfect playa performance. You know, his physical form is ashes now, or soon will be. But his art shook the world and the immediacy of the experiences that so many of us have had because of his art changes the world and the very nature of his his story is the story of burning man and i i'm i'm so stoked and honored and glad that um that our past crossed and that his legacy continues and that I feel like all of us are empowered to own Burning Man. And when someone said, oh no, you know, Burning Man will never be the same. I'm like, what? I think he'd be pretty pissed to hear that. Burning Man, well, I guess the, the, the truth is Burning Man will never be the same, period. Every day is different. Every year is different. But the momentum is, is gone, and uh, all we can do is add our art to it. So 
for all those who are uh, who are close friends and uh, co-workers with Larry, uh, I my heart goes out to the loss that you're feeling right now. Um, as a participant in the community, I know that I speak for many, many people when I feel like few few human beings that were not friends of mine have impacted my life this way. And I hope that his friends and family feel proud of, of how many of us love him and are grateful and are better people because of him. Thank you, Larry Harvey. You're a badass and I think you are a, a high water mark for those of us who trust that letting it out, being ourselves, have the power to change the world. <sighs> so many things in my life, every, almost everything that I do in my life has been a ripple from Burning Man experiences, which are ripples from Larry Harvey. This broadcast, Hug Nation, is a extension of my Burning Man experiences. First Saturdays, my homeless group is an extension of my Burning Man experiences. The way that I look, my name, my philosophies in the world are all extensions of Burning Man. And with that inability to express this with the right words, I will say, would you join me now in a hug in honor of Larry Harvey? Grab yourselves by the shoulders wherever you are and be grateful for this physical being, this physical form that you're in. It is transitory. And so as we have it, appreciate the sensory experiences, the ability to move around and have adventures. What a gift to have this physical form. And what a gift to have the thoughts and the opinions and the passions that go through us. But remembering that we're not the physical form, we're not the thoughts, we are something deeper that energy, that light, that love. And that love shines on regardless of having a physical form. Don't know where or how, Larry does now. And we will eventually, as we once did. But in this moment, let's just allow ourselves to be that energy, that light, that love shining through us. The same light and love that shines through all people when it's free from the personalities and the thoughts. So we'll take three breaths together. Inhale through the nose. Last one. On behalf of Grandpa Caleb, Larry Harvey, and all the love warriors, all the burners, all the artists, the lovers, the dreamers, happy Hug Nation. Thank you.